So I'll draw a line and I will change color and we will start then to consider some criticisms and questions for the argument from evil. All right, one standard uh, response to the argument from evil is to say that uh, everything in the argument is fine uh, except that it does not take into account that God created human beings uh, as a special kind of agency. So God is omnipotent, God is omniscient, God is omnibenevolent, and in fact he did create a perfect world. And in that perfect world he created human beings, and human beings are beings that are not mechanistic puppets like other beings in the world. They are beings that have volition or free will to make their own choices. And so it's a matter then of human agency that badness, or in some cases outright evil, is brought forth into the world. So we should assign responsibility for that badness to human free will, not to God or any flaw in God's plan. So I'm going to call this uh, response number one. And we will call it the free will response. And the argument here is that humans cause all of the bad and the evil in the world, not God. God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent, perfect creator. Uh, it's human beings who come along and mess things up. Now another standard response to the uh, argument from evil, I'll list a number of them and then we can kick them around a little bit in terms of assessing their logical strength, is to say that it is possible that God created a perfect world, uh, but he did allow some imperfections to come into existence and develop uh, because those imperfections allow for some sort of greater good, right, to come into existence. So this is, I'm going to call the, uh, the greater good argument. So we might say, for example, that the little girl who uh, was exposed to the pipe bomb and so therefore was uh, damaged and paralyzed, that as a result of that, she and her mother and her friends develop a stronger uh, character right, than they otherwise might have developed as a result of dealing with this adversity. Perhaps the family uh, came together more strongly. There was an outpouring of community support for, for the child. And so, yes, there is a certain amount of evil here, but nonetheless, it's outweighed by uh, and uh, by the greater good, and the greater good is a necessary consequence of, uh, of, uh, of that evil. A third kind of response, uh, that's a fairly standard response, is to say that, uh, and it could be so seen as a variation of number two, that the reason why God as a perfect being allows evil and bad things to, to exist in the world is to make us more perfect beings, and the way it makes us more perfect beings or, or allows us to uh, strive more for perfection is that the good and the evil uh, and, the, uh, and so forth that exist in the world serve to teach us a lesson about the nature of the good and the evil, and that when we experience evil, we then are more likely to be more resolved in our efforts to achieve the good as opposed to being the kinds of beings that would just automatically do whatever the good is without really knowing the difference between good and evil. So I'm going to call this the claim that the existence of evil right, serves to teach us the difference between good and evil. And it's our knowing consciously the difference between good and evil that puts us in the position of being moral agents who can choose between the good and evil. And it's only then that if we choose the good that uh, our, our choosing the good has great moral significance and makes us more complete and perfect as, as human beings. A fourth kind of response is 
to uh, point out from within the Western traditions the existence of heaven and hell and to argue that the existence of evil in this particular world, the lower physical world, uh, is in the grand scheme of things not that significant uh, and that it's temporary and that all evils that are suffered by innocent individuals are made up for and more than compensated for uh, in heaven and that there is an ultimate justice for those who commit evils in that those individuals then go to hell uh, and they, they have to pay for their crimes in, in, uh, in the suffering they experience there. So uh, I will just make this point here that heaven and hell right, make up for or uh, constitute justice right, for the evils of this world. And part and parcel of that claim is that the, uh, the nature of heaven and hell is uh, that they are infinite uh, in time and they are infinite in their intensity of the experience that one has there. And so by comparison, the evils of this world being finite uh, uh, in both of those dimensions, they pale in comparison to the point of, of uh, insignificance.